Welcome back, gangies. We are back once again. I'm feeling quite well rested, fortunately. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, <clears throat> we keep having an issue on Friday where I record the video early, early in the morning and I forget to post it till late at night. Unfortunately, this is just going to have to be how it is because my memory and brain are garbage. That being the case, <clears throat> we have comments from people whose brains do actually work. And we have a nice comment from our boy T. Wong, part-time entrepreneur, serial author, professional computer toucher, top <clears throat> one of the top algorithms, algorithms within the Australian continent, as well as kind of a monk in the cloud. So in the cloud infrastructure. So we have a message here from Thomas Wong, legend. I think you should move on to the big boy league, leak code mediums. Hmm. This sounds Flames, I'm actually itching to move on, but at the same time, there's a completionist in me that I just can't get past for some reason. I remember when I played uh, the Spider-Man game, the first one on PS4, I think, and there was a part where like I beat the game pretty much, but I just wanted all the bars to say, I don't want to, I never do any of the stuff that's like, uh, like you're trying to get a number to 100 to complete it, but the tasks you're doing are mostly random. If the tasks are laid out and you just have to do them to get the bar to 100, no matter how long they take, for some reason, I really want to do that. So for some reason, making number go up in brain is flames. So <laughs> uh, for some reason, I want to see that easy bar say 624 out of 624. I don't know why, but the path laid there is so straightforward and I'm halfway there that I just really want to. Even though we're not learning as much per problem, but we're still picking up some tricks. Like there was a trick we used that was kind of like uh, that was a trick we used a couple problems ago. Oh, it was it was it was like it was uh, it was like Union Find, but a ghetto version of it, which was kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so I'd really like to do that. I'd really like to get us there. And I think if we take a look, we have about is it 302? Okay, so we have 304 of 626. We have about 320, 318 more problems, which is all things considered not the worst thing in the world because we're halfway there, which is pretty dope. And then we'll have to spend another X amount of days cooking through the mediums, but that would be pretty dope, I feel like. So yeah, uh, it's so tough. I definitely agree we should move on, but I think unfortunately I'm not in a huge rush, so. I can't, I'm kind of taking my time smelling the roses, smelling the flowers. I wish we were back to doing an hour a day. I wish we I really wish we were back to doing that because yeah, we've just been making more progress. And we're making the same progress, we're using half the time, which is kind of annoying because we could have been making double the progress using the same amount of time. So all of this is really, really unfortunate. But there are other things I'm trying to get moving and I'm running out of, I'm running out of executive function every day. So, which is kind of balls, but I'm not exactly certain what else can be done here. But yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. So hopefully, I'm hoping by the end of, this is February, March, I'm hoping by the end of April that we'll be done with all the easies. And I think it should be possible. We just have to go into hyper hyperbolic speed mode, but that would be ideal. That would be ideal. I was just reading a post about how someone did a thousand problems in 18 months. 18 months is like 365 days is one year. 18 months is like a year and is, is, is a year and a half basically. So five day 550, they did a thousand problems. So we're about halfway through that and we've only done 300 problems. So we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> So I think things will start going much faster soon, but yeah, I think the mediums, it's probably time to start them. Cause I just wanted to, I just wanted to get some fundamental skills down in some of these problems, but now it's just an easy way to do is now it's just an easy way to, uh, now it's just an easy way to stay, uh, to slowly make progress. Yeah, just let you make progress. So that's kind of where we're at. I really want to do some though. So this is very frustrating. 
but there's also other skills you must learn. But yeah, I'm definitely obsessing here. I really want all those bars to get to the end. Ah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Even just talking about it makes me want to like just do like four hours today so we can move the needle a little bit more. But uh, a bit nutty indeed. So I think we're going to jump into the session. Thank you for the comment, T Wong. Goaded. I'm curious to know how the session, how, how the new employment is going. If you're cooking it up like we know. And yeah, I think. I have to restart the timer, but I think that's what we're going to do today. We're going to continue with what must be done. So we're shifting a 2D grid. This problem, I think they just want us to move the, the, the cells over. We pretty much want to move all cells over by one. But I think they're having a hard time explaining that. So I think we can just iterate through the whole matrix and shift it. Oh, yeah, after doing this K times, so uh, basically, actually, you could probably simplify this whole thing if you just turned it into an array. If you turned it into an array, how many elements can be in the matrix? That's the real question. Okay, 50 by 50, so that's not too crazy. Yeah, if we just treat this as an array, if we flatten this into an array, the only thing that's changing are the elements are is the element from the end going to the front. And so I think we can simplify this these k operations into taking element from the end and moving it on to the front. So we take which is going const r which is going to be an array of numbers, and then we iterate over over the matrix. What we could do is simply add all the elements grid sub row grid sub call push them onto the array and then we'll we can now iterate over k i is less than k, i plus plus. What we're just going to do is take the element at the end of the array and push it onto the front. The reason this kind of sucks is because we don't have access to a deck. So our shift in the front is actually going to take, our adding to the front is going to take linear time. But if we had access to a deck, we could make this constant time, or as a linked list, we could make this constant time. So we'd say r dot unshift, which would add to the front r dot pop.
And then we can make a matrix. From this. We can just actually copy this from here. And then instead of saying r dot push, we'll just do temp dot push, and what we're going to push is this is going to be very slow since we don't have access to a deck. just say temp dot push right r dot splice starting from zero right grid sub row Let's see if this makes any sense at all. So it looks like our output's correct. It looks like we don't need to continually go over each row. We only need to go over the number of, yeah, we only need to go over the number of rows. That is reassuring. We have some other problems to do. Did we do smallest range? We did do smallest range. We're still ducking on projection area because that problem is impossible. So here we have, you're given a binary array nums. So zero index, ones and zeros, we define x sub i as a number whose binary representation, whose binary representation, x sub i is the number whose binary representation is the subarray of nums sub zero to i from most significant bit to least significant bit. For example, if nums is one, zero, one, then x sub zero is one, x sub one, would be two, okay, x sub two would be five. So what numbers are presented if we stop at, if we include the first index? Now, if we just include the first two, and then if we include all three, return an array of Booleans answer where answer sub i is true if x sub i is divisible Turn an array of Booleans answer where answer sub i is true if x sub i. Oh, okay. So it looks like we'll just have answer array, which is going to be a parallel array of Booleans, which it can actually just be an array of, oh, they want Booleans, so we'll just make it an array of Booleans. We'll return answer here. And what we'll do, I think, is iterate from nums from most significant bit to least significant. Oh, actually no, we probably want to iterate in reverse because if the array is one, zero, one, then X sub one is one, X sub, X sub zero is one, X sub one is two, which means we're going from zero, yeah, we're going from front to back. I don't know if we can build the number like that though. If we put one in, right, and oh yeah, we can, we'll just shift it left. Okay, so I would be equal to zero, I would be less than nums.length. 
I plus plus. In fact, we can probably just say four cons B digit of nums, right? Uh, we're gonna say num, we're gonna add the number to num, right? Because we're gonna build the binary number as we're going through. To do that, we'll need to know if the binary digit is a one or zero. So we'll say num or right num and one so or is going to place it into or is going to place the one into well, we need to shift it first we'll put put the number in yeah we probably want to shift it first so shift it left once right or is going to place the number into uh, is going to place the binary digit into the uh, least significant bit slot if uh, when we mask the binary digit with one uh, if it's an actual one now I'm realizing we can actually just skip this step and just put B digit here now I have num we need to know if num mod 5 equals 0 what we're going to do now is just say answer dot push num mod five equals zero. And I feel like this should work. Oh. Oh nums.length that was my bad the binary digit length you have to 10 to the 5 that's actually kind of crazy hmm yeah we should look at the constraints that is kind of crazy make any sense numbers that length would have to be numbers that length would have to be at max limited to 64 values in the array how can it go up to 10 to the 5 if you had an array with that many ones and zeros I'm not understanding how it huh?
I'm wondering if we can just put the whole thing, so before we're using num, I wonder if we can just use Maybe you can't bit shift. You can't even do modulus on big ints. So what am I saying? <clears throat> oh no, maybe it's that we have to, the number has to be modulus. Okay, so we can figure this out. So. If we do it this way instead, we don't have to bid, build the big int as a sequence of sum of sums of the actual values. So uh, so now we'd have like one zero one, right? When we at, at one, right? We want to do uh, big int right uh or we're going to do num plus equal right the binary digit the binary digit which is one times two to the ith power then we go to index one how do we do that again I have to iterate from that index going to zero. I have to have another loop where i is equal to zero. Or yeah, i is equal no. J is equal to the index that we're currently at, which is i. You want to say well j is greater than or equal to zero, j minus minus. And we're pretty much gonna build a new big int every single time. Let's say num plus equal j, which is actually going to be the power. So say num plus equal Two to the ith power times num sub j.
So our first index is start i equals zero, right? i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero. Is j greater than or equal to zero? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do num plus equals two to the big int sub i power, which is zero, with two to the zeroth power is one, times big int sub num sub j, which is one. So we get num plus equal one. Uh, num mod five does not equal zero. So these cases work again. Maybe we'll get TLE. Or maybe not. Let's see if we're actually getting this correct. We have zero n, right? Then if we were to take this from here, we should have one n. I think this should be the J is actually the power. J is the power. And num sub J is the actual index as well, I believe. I should have taken out the console.log, but. Yeah, we have three, 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 right? And then it should become really large. We should have one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Wait, yeah, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 16. Five. 2 to the 5 is 32. This doesn't make much sense. Why are we getting 35?
Oh, we're going in the... Yeah. It should be the other way around. It should be... I minus J. I see. Okay. Now we know it's just really slow. So maybe we can we can collapse this loop in here. I'm sure there's an angle or direction we can go from where we can collapse both for loops. But that is what we'll do. Tomorrow, that's where we'll stop.